Welcome to the first Christmas miracle. Tonight is a celebration, a celebration that Mary and Joseph chose life. We're gonna walk you through what could have happened, but what didn't happen. And that's what we're excited about. Pastor Tony Suarez, would you please lead us in prayer? Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this day and this wonderful event that we're having here tonight. I thank you for that very first Christmas miracle. I remember that old song that they sang in my church. When I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed because I don't just have a testimony. I have multiple testimonies of the goodness and the mercy of God, but it all started with that very first Christmas miracle. So today we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for grace and salvation and mercy. We thank you for the gift of life that we celebrate today. And in the tongue of my father, Father, Señor Jesús, te doy las gracias, la honra, la gloria y el honor por el regalo mejor que el mundo ha recibido, el Señor Jesucristo. We thank you for that greatest gift of all, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we do all things in that wonderful name, and everybody says, amen. Thank you, Pastor Tony, for such a powerful and moving prayer. Now, as Alveda King and Ben Scott lead us in O Holy Night, press the share button so you can share this message of life and this message of hope. Thank you so much, Pastor Jay. Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us in celebrating the first miracle of Christmas. Ben and I are gonna worship a little bit on one of my favorite hymns, O Holy Night. And we invite you to sing along with us. We're so glad that Mary and Joseph chose life. They obeyed God and chose life. And we have God's precious gift. This is the first miracle of Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, He. Oh. 
his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is a brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we with all our hearts. We praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord. Oh, praise his name for song. Thank you so much. That was just absolutely beautiful. Hi, my name is Eric Tran. I am the founder of Chavo Animation Studios here in Burbank, California, and just wanted to thank you so much for inviting us into your screens uh, into this holiday season. You know, this has been a very crazy wild ride for so many millions of Americans and people around the world, and yet we are just so thankful that God has allowed um, miracles to happen in these dark times. And for God to allow us to use our talents in a way that we just hope will bless so many people's lives. Uh, what you're about to see is a over one minute presentation, um, an animated film that our team has produced and hopes that will actually save lives. Our team has been working countless hours, uh, literally pouring our hearts into this film and we hope that will bless many people's lives. Uh, we encourage you to share it with as many people as possible. And, uh, you know, we know that uh, God will just do, you know, he'll do a miracle. So we thank you again so much. God bless you and have a Merry Christmas. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant. Greetings. You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. And you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins.
Did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you deliver would soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man Oh Mary, did you know That your baby boy Would calm the storm with his hands Did you know That your baby boy Has walked with angels drunk When you kiss your little baby you kiss the face of God. Oh, Mary, did you know? Oh, Mary, did you know? No. The blind will see. the Lord of all creation. Oh, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? The sleeping child is a great I am. He's a great I am. Oh. The blind will see the death Thank you, Danny. That was beautiful. One of my favorite songs, Mary, Did You Know. I'm grateful that she chose life. Your family, why don't you tell me where you are? Where are you viewing from? Type it in the comment section. Now we're here from Father Frank Pavone. Hello, my friends. I'm Father Frank Pavone, National Director of Priests for Life. And may I begin by wishing you, your families, uh, your church is a most blessed Christmas celebration and a happy new year. 
You know, in the Gospel of Luke, we read that an angel visited the Virgin Mary of Nazareth with the surprising and astonishing news that she would conceive a child. She said, how can this be? I have no relations with a man. And yet, once it was explained to her that she would be the mother of the Son of God, she said, let it be done to me according to your word. Then we read in the Gospel of Matthew how an angel likewise appeared to Joseph, saying, don't be afraid to take Mary into your home as your wife. This child that has been conceived is by the Holy Spirit. These two angelic appearances both had the message, don't be afraid to welcome the child. And Mary, in saying, let it be done to me according to your will, said exactly the opposite of what we hear in the so-called pro-choice message, which is the asserting of my own will, my body, my rights, my choice. No, Mary and Joseph say, Lord, your rights, your choice, your plan, we will do what you want. So many today are pregnant and afraid, facing the prospect of a child without having made any plans for that situation. In the normal course of human events, angels are not going to appear to them. You and I have to speak to them. You and I need to give them the encouragement to welcome that child. Look at who the child was that Mary and Joseph welcomed. Every child brings blessing into the world. But you know, we're not able to reach each and every person who is pregnant and afraid. And that is where the role of the law comes in. One of the ways we can, in fact, help all those who are pregnant and in need to avoid the temptation of abortion is to work for laws that will protect those children because the law is a strong deterrent. And we know from experience that when abortion is not legal, or when there are more obstacles in the way, more requirements, for example, to wait, get information, uh, parental consent in the case of minors, in fact, lives are saved. So let's put into office public servants who know the difference between serving the public and killing the public and who are ready to pass laws to protect these children from the violence of abortion. Vote and vote pro-life. Once again, my best wishes for a very Merry Christmas in welcoming the Christ child. Let's welcome and protect every child, both in life and in law. God bless you. Wow, too many have been aborted. What in the world are we going to do about it? Angela, when I think about you and your own testimony, you're a mother and you've made some choices in life that did not help you. And yet today, you fight for life. You're almost like Rachel weeping for her children and she just won't be comforted. We're glad that Mary and Joseph chose life. But how in the world do we get people to choose life today? Wow. You know, I didn't really always choose life. You know, there were a time I'm, I'm post abortive myself and I just really didn't understand. But I understand now and I'm fighting for life now. And it's because of my own personal story. 
I mean, after being sexually abused at the age of five years old, I found myself pregnant at the age of 14. And although my father demanded an abortion, my mother demanded life. And because of my mother, my daughter today is an attorney, a Howard Law School graduate. She's a civil litigation she's attorney. She's beautiful, smart. And she's yes. beautiful and she has her own life. Not only that, but because of bad decisions I made in my past, you know, I found myself, you know, chained to a bed in prison, giving birth to my youngest daughter, Imani. And at 16 years old, she's a part of Harvard Debate School, and she has a 4.4 GPA, a dual enrollment student. I think the best thing that I ever did was choose life for my children, and you played a big role in that, and that's why I'm fighting for life today. And you know, I thank God that your testimony about having your baby girl chained to a bed in prison reached the ears of the president, and in the First Step Act, women can no longer be chained to a bed. Now, we want to help women beyond that experience and families. You know, Joseph and Mary chose life. So we want to help families to choose life here in 2020. Do you have any advice on what to say to somebody? If you really speak just straight to your audience, if they are thinking about an abortion, what should they do? You know, I remember many years ago that whenever we got news that a, someone was pregnant, that we looked at that as being a blessing. Now it seems as though they look at the unborn as being a curse. So that I would just encourage any young mother to look into the future. Although your circumstances may be bad today, that doesn't mean that they're not going to change for the better tomorrow. Have faith and don't abort your blessing. Wow. Glory to God. I couldn't say it any better. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Thank you, Angela, for such a powerful testimony. It touched me and encouraged me and gave me hope. And I know it did the same for you. So why don't you take a moment and share this with a loved one or with a friend so they can be encouraged as well. Now we're here from Pastor Tony as he shares his heart with you. Here's what the Lord put on my heart for you today. Faith doesn't mean that we have to live in denial to our problems and the situations that we're going through. I know there's people that are hurting tonight. Four years ago, I lived through some of the greatest pain of my life when I had to bury my first wife who had died of cancer. I had to face my very first Christmas with three children at home, being their father and their mother, and trying to reconcile how we can live through the valley of the shadow of death, yet experience the joy of the Lord. But I stand here tonight as a living testimony that in spite of what's going on in our life, even in the midst of pandemic and racial unrest and all the calamities that one could talk about in 2020, I can stand here today and tell you the Lord is good and His mercy is forever. There are some tonight that will look back on this year and they'll reflect on everything we've had to live through. But I want you to take a moment and celebrate that we've come through. We've come through a pandemic. We've come through turmoil. And yet here we stand tonight by the mercy and the grace of Almighty God. And here's the promise that I want to share with you out of the book of Job chapter 5, verse 22 through the end of the chapter. It says, you will laugh in the face of destruction. Yea, you will even laugh in the face of famine. Now, some would say, well, but these aren't laughing matters. But it's not that we're laughing at the famine or the destruction, but we're laughing at the fact that here I am. I'm still standing. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't have made it. But God has been good to me. And here's the promise I want to leave you with. It says, when you survey your surroundings, when you survey your possessions, nothing, nothing means nothing. Nothing in Spanish means nada. Nothing will be missing. And I prophesy to you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that when you survey your surroundings, when you survey your ministry and your family and your marriage and your money and your children and your joy and your health and your wealth, nothing will be missing because Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God Almighty, the Lord our provider is also the protector and he has been protecting everything that belongs to you. And I want you to celebrate tonight 
as we celebrate that great first miracle of the birth of Jesus Christ, I want you to celebrate that just in the same way that Herod tried to cancel that promise 2,000 years ago, the Father protected what belonged to humanity, and that same Almighty God has protected what belongs to you. And as we come out of this year, we're celebrating that Jesus is still King, He's still Lord, He's still Savior, and He's still on the throne. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. This nation needs to pray. Call out to Jesus. Humble yourselves. Pray for the families. Pray for the justice. 
Vanessa is so right. We need to pray. Thanks to Babby Mason for writing that song. And Vanessa, you and your friend Babby are great songwriters. Thank you. We must pray. Pastor Geraldine, I'm so glad to be sharing a moment with you. And even as our host, and by the way, you do a marvelous job as a host, but I'd like for the people to know you even more intimately. I'm thinking about Mary and Joseph, and they chose life. And of course, God blessed us with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, through their obedience. Now, your case, you're not so much like Mary and Joseph, but maybe a little bit like Jose and Gomer. Would you mind sharing how God kept blessing you with babies? even when you didn't always do exactly what God wanted you to do. It's amazing. The story of his amazing grace, his love for me, not just for me, for all of us. But my story is just like everyone else's story and very similar to Mary's story. I was young, getting ready to be married, pregnant to someone, by someone who was not the man I was going to marry. And I had an opportunity then to get an abortion. Someone actually paid for it. But I was selfish, selfish then, selfish like most people. And it wasn't because it was God's righteousness why I didn't have the abortion. It was my own selfishness because I wanted a pair of shoes. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. I wanted to do something else. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the abortion. And my son has grown now. He's never been a burden to me. But even after that experience and not knowing Jesus Christ personally as my Lord and Savior, I went on like most women that are black and brown and continued to have abortions outside of God's will, outside of his grace, outside of his plan for my life repeatedly as a form of birth control. And I sit here with you today just grateful that even in my disobedience and even though I continued to walk the walk that I should not walk. God kept blessing me over and over again to now I'm the proud mother of seven living children. Wow. And I don't know what I did to deserve that. Talk about being faithful over a little that he will bless you with much. My quiver is full and I am blessed. Amen. And you know, my story in many ways is similar. And I've been called the woman at the well and the woman caught in the act. And Jesus said to Mary Magdalene, go and sin no more. And so I want to ask you, what changed? What caused you to go and sin no more? Well, I'm definitely not sinless. I just sin less by the grace of God. But it's my personal relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when I think about what Mary could have done. 
during that time. She was a prime candidate to do what I did, what most people did, but she didn't. And she carried the gospel. She carried life. She chose life. And that's what's important because even after all of my mistakes, God continued to bless me. So it just showed me who was in control. Do you know I had a lot of those babies on birth control? He I can just, believe it. I did too. <laughs> yeah, he I said was in spite birth control, of six births and yes. two abortions and a miscarriage. Yes. And so here we have Mary and Joseph, crisis pregnancy. They had a need to go and pay taxes, so they were dealing with financial issues. She's pregnant with somebody, hey, who's going to be the king of kings, but not mm -hmm. Joseph's baby. He could have cast her aside, and she could have been stoned. Absolutely. Aren't we glad they chose life? I am grateful that they chose life. Because they chose life, we get to choose life because God chose us. Amen. <laughs> you heard my story, but that's not all of it. I am grateful for God's grace, his love, and his mercy. And I'm here today, a proud mother of seven children, four grandchildren, one on the way, and an incredible husband that loves me for me. Only God can do that. Now you're about to hear a powerful song, an amazing and anointed woman of God, Vanessa Mitchell, singing Unity. Let's walk together in unity. Unity, unity. That's what we need is more unity. God's people are an army. We're in a war against sin. And a house that is divided is not able to stand. We gotta ask our Heavenly Father for a change of the heart. Cause we can do much more together than we can do apart. We need you. Unity. Oh, yes, we do. Unity. Let's walk together. Let's walk together in unity. 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 You and unity. That's what we Pleasant it is to dwell in harmony. But how can we walk together unless we agree? We gotta build one another up and stop tearing one another down. So put your hand in mine. We can turn this world around. We need unity. Yes, we do. Let's walk together. Come on and take my hand. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
thank you so much, Vanessa, for that beautiful song about unity, because that's exactly what we need. Pastor Tony, don't you agree? Amen. We need unity uh, amongst our people, and we need to be unified on our message. We, it's, it's time that we finally come together. We've talked about it for a long time, mm -hmm. but now it's time for action. It is absolutely time for action, especially with the black and the brown people. For years, our people have been the victim of this abortion thing, mm -hmm. as um, Dr. Alveda say, the abortion mill. Right, absolutely. Well, you know, one of the things that I see in our community, and, and again, speaking specifically to black and brown community, we love Jesus. Yes. We love church. Oh. We like churchy church. Oh, yeah. We like to praise. We Hallelujah. like to worship. Listen, the black church isn't the only one that hoops. We hoop in the Spanish church, too. You know, I say if you really want to get saved, go to a Spanish church. That's right. <laughs> I mean, we, we, lo we love church. I love the spirit. But what I think the moment has exposed mm -hmm. is that we have a lot of cultural Christianity, but we don't have true conversions. We like the worship. We like the beat, we like the music, we know how to do church. But right now we can't just do church, we have to be the church. I think we're stuck in religion mm -hmm. instead of relationship. Absolutely. And a relationship will allow you to choose life. Absolutely. And that's why we're here today, because life is so important. Mary and Joseph chose life, we need to choose life, and our people need to choose life. And decrease that number where almost half of us are, are killing our babies. I, I have just in the last few days pondered that question mm -hmm. when I heard about us coming together. Yes. And I just thought about that question. What if there wasn't, what, what if there wouldn't have been a Jesus? What if Mary and, and Joseph look at each other and say, no, our, you know, our socioeconomic oh, yeah. uh, you know, situation doesn't really allow for it. Now we're, we're, we might have to be immigrants. That's not going to allow. I mean, they had every excuse that our society would That's give right. our communities today to say, make a different choice over life. Mary and Joseph had to fight those same situations. That shows you that there's nothing new under the sun, mm -hmm. but they chose life. And because they chose life, you and I have new life today. Absolutely, and I'm grateful. So now we need to encourage people to volunteer. We Absolutely. need them to do something, not just sit there and listen to us, but to get out there and volunteer because it is extremely important, more than ever before, to vote life. My pastor, my mentor, his name is Sam Rodriguez. He has always taught me, silence is not an option. You are what you tolerate. And so if you're going to tolerate mm -hmm. this anti-life movement, then say nothing. But as I heard Jensen Franklin say, if you won't, then speak now or forever hold your peace. Well, we need to speak. Mm -hmm. We need to be unified in our voice. We need to speak the same thing. Vote pro-life. We need to do it. We need to show up. All of us, the black and the brown, we need to go there, cast our vote, because you know what I say? If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. So well, it's important for us to step up and be counted we for. We must be counted for. And when you vote, and I'm speaking specifically for this, yes. for the, at this moment to the brown community, we all have friends and acquaintances that can't vote. Mm -hmm. So think of how doubly important your vote is. You're voting for the one that can't vote. Your vote is a voice for the voiceless. And they're voting for the unborn because it was a fetus that first rejoiced well, at the sound of the coming savior. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Pastor Tony, Pastor Jay. You know, it's so important that everyone let our spirits and hearts be lifted. We're so glad that Mary and Joseph chose life, and now we have Jesus. So, Merry Christmas to everybody. And I want everybody to sing Feliz Navidad. Merry, Merry Christmas, everybody. Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Prospero año y felicidad Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Prospero año y felicidad We wanna wish you a Merry Christmas we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We 
want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of our hearts. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of our hearts. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Feliz Navidad!